welcome guys to PLM After Hours uh, on today's episode, which is episode five. On my right, we have Jason. How's it going, guys? To my far right, I got Ralph. What's up, guys? We're back at it again, episode five. There's a question that we get all the time, right? It's uh, everywhere we go, we hear somebody talking about, should I buy a house, should I not? I'm tired of hearing all this uh, options that from people that don't, are not really in the industry. I think today we had to bring our boy, somebody, one of the best here in Arizona, a loan officer, Eduardo Gomez, Eddie. Eddie yes, knows sir. loans, man. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for, for being me. here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you. Uh, appreciate you. We can't can't wait to actually learn a lot. This is uh, this is a subject that me personally I don't know much, right? I I can sell a car. I know about cars, but I'm very intrigued and I'm honored that you'll be able to teach us a lot and all the viewers today. Yeah, hundred um, percent, man. And I'm here because I think uh, the world of you. I think that you've built an amazing team and like what you've done through the years. Like everybody thinks of you like as an overnight success story, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's I like I oh, woke that. up, woke up one day and selling Lamborghinis, but like <laughs> nobody knows like the background, right? Yeah. Like what where you actually started, like what happened, yeah. and then now like a lot of people look up to you, right? And I admire that about you, and I admire the team that you have built, uh, which Thank is you, amazing, man. dude. How many people are you guys now? Uh, about 14 people. Dang. Right yeah, That's about awesome. 14. So it's, it, and I really appreciate the compliment. Same, likewise to you. Yeah. You know, we look up to you as well. Um, what do you think as far as this? Teach us, be our teacher today, man. Teach That's us some funny. stuff. So, so, one of the questions that I get all the time, and speaking of dealerships or like cars, right? Like, right. Um, should I buy a car first or should I buy a house first? Right. Like, how does buying a car affect me? How does buying a house affect me? Like, when I need a car or this and that, right? The most important thing is that uh, there's no um, there's no direct answer without really first understanding like the person's full financial profile. Okay. If somebody makes five thousand dollars a month, a three hundred dollar car payment, or four hundred or even five hundred dollar car payment, anything less than ten percent of their total monthly income should not affect them on certain loans towards the ability of buying a house. Now, if they have that $500 car and then another $700 razor or something like that, right. then that's when like it starts getting complicated, that, that right? That income percentage gets higher. You can't, you could afford less. It's hard. Exactly. To People start affording less once they start spending more and having more. So uh, for, that's on their for home loans, you said it's about 10%. I know for cars, it's crazy. It's 22% for most lenders, but mm -hmm. some lenders right now, what we saw with this whole car bubble and, 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 and you know, everything going up, up to 55%. Some wow. Years. So I know. of their income, people could use. So what you're saying is that if people made a thousand dollars a month, yeah. they could have a payment up to 50, yeah. uh, 550 bucks a month. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, technically you need at least $2,000 gross oh. income to be able to buy a car. That's the way they see it. But up 2, to 2000, that means that they could have a thousand one hundred thousand dollar car payment. Yeah. Car yeah. Payment. yeah. yeah. This is changing now though, as yeah. you know, with the rates increasing, making it harder for people to buy yeah. for cars, for homes as well. And we'll get into that a uh, little, you know, later. But I, first, before we get into like the whole credit stuff, I, I you know, I want to know a little bit about you. Your company is Eddie Knows Loans, right? That's right. So yeah. So tell us a little bit about your company, when it was funded, uh, what you do. That way, people can understand where all this knowledge is coming from. And pretty much how you got into the whole home business, loan business, the yeah. loan business. Yeah, That's funny. I'm pretty sure before you were actually your own company, you were working for something like similar, you know, and then yeah. at some point yeah. you decided, you know what. I'm gonna start doing it. Give us the rundown. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to Chuck E. Cheese or what? Yeah, back to where <laughs> well, I think I've seen that. that yeah. video. Tell yeah. us, Let's man. go yeah, back to Chuck E. Cheese. So, uh, my journey started uh, doing the right thing, right? Like, uh, I think that doing the right thing will always lead us to uh, the promised land if we just do the right thing all the time. You always keep right? those doors open. You keep your doors always. open 100%. So um, when I was 16 years old, my parents were on the process of losing their house. Uh, while they were losing their house, I had really, really good grades and I was like, I had great like um, SAT scores and like I was wanting to go to school to be an engineer, like just like my dad, right? Okay. Uh, but I found out that because my parents were losing their house, they didn't have any credit and I couldn't get student loans. Because my dad was an engineer, like his, he hadn't lost his job. And because he hadn't lost his job, technically, like I didn't qualify for like grants and scholarships to right. go to college. Right? right. So I couldn't study what I wanted to study. This was, was this back in like the 2008, 2006, 2010 crisis? Yeah, 2007, all that 2008, right. um, okay. 2008 ish. My parents had gotten all of the money uh, that they had saved up their whole lives, right? When we moved to Arizona and dumped it all into a house. 
four years later when I was getting ready to graduate high school. <laughs> they were not making their mortgage payments no more. <laughs> the house was no more shit. Uh, and they, uh, and I couldn't go to the college that I wanted to go to. So I was super pissed. Like I was like, man, like what the hell? Like I've been getting good grades all this time. Like what the hell is going on? Working so hard. Yeah. So it was really annoying. Like, it, I mean, it really hurt me at that time. Right. So I started working at Chuck E. Cheese at 16 years old. So working at Chuck E. Cheese, uh, I would want to make the biggest tip possible, right? Like I was money hungry, like I was like, hell yeah, like I'm gonna make this money, right? So uh, Rafa would come into Chuck E. Cheese with his little kids, right? Danny would come in with his kids, uh, Jason would come in with his kids, or since none of them had kids, they'd all come in with like their-, their We were the kids. Or you guys were the kids, yeah. Uh, you guys would all come in, and the first thing I would ask is, how much money do you want to spend? Right? That's, yeah. How many people are coming to the party? And then I'd create a plan for you guys. Right. So I'd create a plan. I would say, hey, okay, you can have this many tokens, as many pizzas, uh, this many drinks, right? Mm -hmm. People were like, okay, cool. I followed through on the plan. And at the end of the party, instead of the bill being the $200 that you told me you wanted to spend, the bill was only 180. Mm -hmm. Why? Because those 20 bucks were mine, right? Like, hey, I wanted to make, I wanted right. a tip. Like that was an automatic tip. You told me 200, I gave you $200 worth of shit. But yeah, it's only a, it's right. only 180. Right. So that's an automatic $20 tip for me. Yeah. Okay. One time I did that for a guy named Paul. Uh, Paul worked at 83rd Avenue and Lower Buckeye at a Wells Fargo. I had no clue at this point. I just knew that he was dressed real nice that day, right? Hey, and by the way, he's the one that hired me at a Wells Fargo too. Remember Paul? Really? I told you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Paul oh, hired you? Yeah. That so, was his worst mistake. No. He used to always cut no. short at the at the thing. Yeah, you were short at the you were short <laughs> on your always drawer. Short. On his <laughs> we used to play so, soccer. He would show up late all the time. Uh, the, the, yeah, <laughs> so I used to. Well, one of my first jobs was at uh, Home Depot. I was like a cashier, and I was like, "Well, I just need to do something else." I was yeah. just tired of it. Then that's when I went to apply to the store, and that guy helped me out. Paul, he's a really cool guy. I think he works. I think he moved out to the other location, the one that he used to be. I'm not sure where he works He moved now. to 59th Avenue Thomas or something. Yeah. Else. But the point is, he helped me out. He was like, oh, I think you're really cool. I like your vibe. I think He's always seen potential. I'll give you yeah. you know, an opportunity. Yeah. And the funny I thing is. I hope he gets to watch this. Like the, the funny so, thing. So that day I went to college. And then after the college classes, I had to go to the to the um, interview. interview. Mm. And then, well. You know, everybody goes to the interviews with, you know, your shirt and everything, <laughs> your tie and everything. Well, I just got out of school. I just had a shirt and everything. So I'm, uh -huh. like, I'm just going to go like that. But it was like formal, like casual, you know, and the yeah. guy was like, you're the, fir the first guy that shows to the interview like this. I'm like, but yeah, I mean, I, I know I do like, you know, pretty good on my job. So the way you dress, it shouldn't really like tell how you are, you know? Yeah. So it's just everything about you, you know, your attitude, if, if you're good and you yeah. give those he, vibes. He must have liked your honesty so. then, that's what he how'd you How'd you show up to your first job interview? I've never been at a job no? interview. No? Damn, bro. I've never, that's one thing about yeah. me, bro. I've never worked for, I've never, I've never, never, I'm 29 now. Yeah. I've never seen a pay stub with my name on it Damn. in my life. But I think that's been a great character for me because I've had to really, really work. Like, I've always been, whatever I do is what I get based. paid Hey, yeah, you performance do. Performance-wise. Right. So, it's all on me. That's yeah. all it is. You know, I can't rely on, oh, well, this hour, I'm going to relax because regardless, yeah. I'm going to get paid my $20, $25 yeah. an hour now. If I sat down that hour, that's an hour more I had to make up some other time. Yeah. You know, so I think that, that, was a, that that's what really built my character. Yeah. I'm really thankful for that. Um, but yeah, I've never seen a fucking pay stuff. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Um, so going back to... Until the ones that oh, now you give out. Now, <laughs> right? Yeah, now, now. Yeah, Dude, sometimes to... it's funny because uh, I'm working with the customer. They give me a pay stuff and you know this, huh, Danny? Yeah. I'm like, hey, uh, fuck. I was like, Where, where's the year to date? I can't find shit because yeah. I've never seen a pay stuff, right? right? Works, you know, other right. people right away, my finance manager right away finds it. You know, yeah. but for me, I've never seen it. So that's crazy. So now when I'm here, now that I didn't know the same guy oh, had hired yeah. you, yeah. I'm seeing this guy, you know, he has a good vision for potential. You know what I mean? So he's going back to your story, he saw potential in yeah, you. Yeah, so this guy said, hey man, like you analyzed my needs, you set expectations, you followed through. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't know what the hell these words mean. Like I'm 17 years old. I'm trying to make 20 bucks, I'm bro. To make 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm trying to make 20 bucks. Like I'm dressed in a sweaty Chuck E. Cheese suit and here you are wearing fucking Armani, right, you know, right. like what fucking this shit mean? It's like, no, dude, like you could do really well at the bank, right? right. So uh, he says, here's my business card. When you turn 18 years old, come to the bank and I'm going to give you a job. That's crazy uh, I was how at 16, you were already... 17. So 17. at this point, like I had been working at Chuck E. Cheese for over a year already. Okay. 
And uh, never had I gotten that opportunity. I always did the same thing, but I never had that opportunity. So a door of opportunity finally came through. We, right? were, we were going to school the next day, and he was telling me, hey, this guy came in About that? Yeah, hey, oh, that's one we're thing. We're in that, high school. Uh, Jason and um, Eddie went to the same high school. We, we go way back. back. 62106. Yeah, 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 he always tells me that when I talk yeah, to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but we're on our way to school, and he showed me his car. He said, this guy told me a car. What does that mean? His mom would take us to school every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His mom went to pick up, like, yeah. would pick me up from school every Jay's day. Mom I'd walk over nicest, to his house. Jay's yeah, mom is the nicest. The moms bro, that's where I would have breakfast at. Really? That's where I have yeah. breakfast at. She yeah, sends burritos yeah. sometimes, huh, Jay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, she didn't send yesterday. We got a call. Hey, she, she was going on. Is she mad? Is she mad? What did you do, Jay? I ran out of say on the camera. I know. Look in the fridge. You didn't take your... You my Tupperware, oh, yeah. my Tupperware, <laughs> Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> the my wife does that to me. Oh no, you didn't bring it. I ain't, ain't giving you oh, food. That's, <laughs> funny. that's crazy, dude. Yeah, and then, know. so you were seventeen now. So and I was then? seventeen. Uh, I was four months away from turning eighteen years old, and this guy had just opened the door of opportunity for me. Right, like I was. I didn't have to clean up puke no more. I didn't have to uh, dress in the sweaty Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck, Chuck e. Cheese uh, suit no more, outfit no more. Uh, I didn't have to deal with all these fucking kids. Right. right. Uh, but I continued giving my all, which is something that I've always done too. Like I've continued giving my very, very, very best to Chuck E. Cheese, even though like I knew that I was going to get this job, like as soon as I turned 18. Right. I also didn't want to let that door of opportunity close on me. So I put my foot on that shit. So what happened was, um, every Thursday we used to get, or every other Thursday we used to get paid at Chuck E. Cheese. And every other Thursday, I would ask for a ride for my friends because I didn't drive at the time. So I would ask for a ride from one of the people that were there. Like, hey, I got to go to from Dysart and McDowell. I got to go to 83rd and Lower Buckeye. Yeah. And on 83rd and Lower Buckeye uh, is the bank that I'm going to be getting a job at. So, like, I really got to go there so I can cash my check right there and that guy can remember me. Right. People are like, hell no. Nah. Like, you, there's 10 banks right. between here yeah. and there. Yeah. Like, why you got to go all the way the hell over there? Yeah. Like. Uh, I'll take you to the chase down the street. And before those drives, drives were long. Those, those drives were long. Yeah, yeah. Back like back then, like the West Side was like, there was Dysart and McDowell, and then there was nothing between them and, <laughs> yeah, and like 99. Yeah. Like there was nothing. Like no Avondale Sports Complex, none, of, none of that shit, no. So uh, every Thursday, every other Thursday when I got my paycheck, hey, Paul, I'm here and eight more checks and I turn 18 and I get the job. Hey, Paul, I'm here and seven more checks and I turn 18 and I get the job. Hey, Paul, I'm here in six oh, more checks and hey, Paul, head. five more yeah. checks and hey, Paul, three more yeah. checks and hey, Paul, next week I turn 18 and I get the job. I'll be here next week. I'll be here next week. Yeah. <laughs> That's the crazy. day I turned 18 years old, I went to this, uh, to his branch and I sat at Robert's desk. Robert was Natasha's boyfriend. I don't know. She was in high school. She worked at Chuck E. Cheese with us mm-hmm. too. I sat at Robert's desk um, and I applied for the job. And then uh, that was February 23rd of 2011. April 4th of 2011, I got the job, and I got kicked out of high school. Oh, shit. Dude, that's crazy how you mm. remember all these fucking dates. That, to me, shows me how grateful you are for those moments. Yeah. That's insane. You remember the names. You remember the people. The fucking dates, bro. You want to tell us why you got kicked out of that's high school? That's insane. Why? That's happened? crazy. I got kicked out of high school because... Uh, so, I was pissed first because I couldn't get scholarships, loans, or grants, right? Yeah. Why did that, like, I guess we'll go back to why that happened and, like, how I attribute that onto how I help people today in the mortgage industry. But um, I got kicked out of school because I missed too many days in a row to go to work. Like, to go to a job that was going to give me my future. Like, I thought it was going to give me my future. And getting started in banking at that point is the reason why I am where I am today, you know? Like, got started, like, right there in high school, basically. Um, And, like... When I came back after 10 days of missing school in a row because I had to go to a training, uh, I came back to school and my uh, English teacher um, tells me, what are you doing here? Like, you're no longer enrolled in this class. Right. I was like, the hell? Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm not enrolled in this class. Like, mm-hmm. I got really good grades. Like, everything's good, you know? Like, yeah, you got to go to the principal's office. So I go to the principal's office. Yeah, you missed too many days in a row. Like, you've been dropped from the school. And I'm like, what the hell, dude? Like, I've already done everything that I needed to do. And, like, here's what's really going on. Like, my parents took all of their life savings um, put from and put it in a house. And they lost the house. And I can't get scholarships because they make too much money, supposedly. I think if you made more than, like, $40,000 back then, like, you could literally get scholarships, right? <laughs> um, and that's supposed to. But that's also not enough money to send your kid to school, right? So 
um, that, so then I ended up, um, yeah, so I ended up not being able to go um, back to my classes only in school suspension for like the last month and a half or so that uh, school was remaining. Um, but that opportunity there, like what happened, like what the bank gave me and the, and the, and that door that I crossed, right. uh, to get into the financial industry, got me to where I am today. Right. That's insane, bro. When I got my first, uh, W2 where I made over a hundred grand, mm -hmm. I sent that shit to the teacher. I was like, Hey, I have 180 so something <laughs> reasons, 180 something thousand reasons to thank you for kicking me the fuck out. Fine, I'm not bro. spiteful like that anymore, but I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> so I know she remembers. I hope she's watching. I hope she's watching. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. And I yeah. know I'm not the only one watching this, hearing this, and thinking, damn, this motherfucker was 16, thinking, figuring out a way. What 16, 17 year old right now thinks, all right, they gave me this budget. I'm working on an hour. How can I make more 20 more bucks? Nobody mm -hmm. does that. Yeah. I don't know a 16 year old that does that. 16 year olds are. Right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna do my thing. Whatever. Blah blah blah. I'm off at six five whatever i'm quiet quitters huh? 17 the, the year, right? quiet quitters 17 year about. old and now you're 17 yeah. you met this guy paul paul was his yeah. name right you met this guy paul the consistency of messaging this guy knowing hey i'm still here i'm waiting I for this opportunity face to face. bro telling him hey yeah. i'm here and i can't wait for this fucking opportunity yeah. you know and then now from struggling in your own mortgage your, your family's mortgage to now fucking helping people who are struggling in theirs yeah that's fucking i want to i want to do a cheers on that salute, Eddie. Salute. congratulations cheers. on everything man that's powerful salute, salute. that's fucking great and that's very inspiring honestly man congratulations on cheers, all that bro. so and you know i think a lot of like hispanic people they don't really know they just they don't know there's more options out there let's say Let's say a family, it's, you know, they're going through something. They can make a payment. Also, why can they, what can they do to maybe come up with a plan to be, you know, on top of their payment and not lose their house? I know there's different programs for, like, people to, like, maybe refinance. Or sometimes they put on top of whatever they owe just to the loan, mm -hmm. but just so they can start again. I know there's a few programs. Yeah, so to, to speak on that a little bit, uh, the banks realized when the market crashed back in 2008 that it makes more sense to take the money or to take the payments that people can't make right now because like they're either switching jobs or something's going on they got hurt at work and like the disability hasn't kicked in or something's going on right um and adding them to the top of the debt And then that interest starts accumulating, accumulating, is that, is accumulating. That like compounding interest or something? That compounds interest, okay. exactly. Right. And then long term, at some point, the person is going to have to sell the house. And that five, ten thousand dollars that they skipped in payments turned into fifteen, twenty right. that the bank the is getting later. And now the bank is looking, okay, instead of taking the house away and selling it an auction and getting end. less yeah. that, that's now what they're doing is they're just adding the debt on top of their mortgage payment and then at some point that person's going to have to sell their house and when they do they're going to collect what was owed and mm -hmm. some that's one thing that good thing you guys brought this up because one of the questions i made a real you know i made a, a, a questionnaire you know ask eddie yeah. what you want the biggest question on there is when is this crash going to happen yeah is there going to be a crash and it's good that Now you say this because I've seen some of your stories where you make where you touch this this, this uh, you Sorry. know this yeah so where you say it's not going to be a crash you just said it right now banks learned from their mistakes mm -hmm. banks now evolved can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah hundred percent so um, if a, if you owe the bank a hundred dollars right. right and every month you're making a one dollar a month payment one dollar a month payment one dollar a month payment right. Uh, in one month, you can't pay uh, the dollar anymore. The bank can do one of two things. They can take your house away and they can sell it in an auction and they can get $60 for the $100 that you owed them. Right. Or they can say, you know what? This guy owes me five bucks. Let me take that five bucks, add it to the hundred. Now they owe me 105. Right. And then that interest is going to continue accumulating and accumulating. And at some point, that person is going to have to pay me back 120 bucks. Right. And if the, they do have to foreclose it in the future when they owe 120 bucks, maybe the market is better now, like it did now, mm -hmm. to where the bank will not have to sell the house for sixty thousand. Exactly. Right? Maybe the house now is worth one fifty, mm -hmm. one 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 hundred, one one twenty even. You know what I mean? So that's it's a, yeah. That's, so the banks are taking that debt and or that payment and they're adding it to the top. That way, people don't lose the house. The banks don't want a market crash like the learned. way it happened. They learned from They've before. Learned. And not only that, but I think one of the main reasons too is because before I know 
they used they used to just give houses to anybody. Oh yeah, like the people with I mean, yeah. let's say mm-hmm. they didn't have proof of income. Oh, a job letter. Here you go. You made a hundred grand last month. So and they just I'm, get qualified for big house, and at the end of the day, they couldn't make the payment. The other thing about that was that uh, what people were getting qualified for uh, was a um, interest only loan that had a variable interest on top of that. So there's one- What's the difference between, I mean, simple interest loan and a variable interest, can you tell us what the difference yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, maybe you guys call it simple interest, like on like in the car business, yeah. um, in the mortgage business, like we call it a interest only loan. Okay. And so an interest only loan is essentially where you're not making any money, you're not paying any money towards the amount that you actually owe. So towards your principal. Correct. Okay. All you're doing is you're only paying um, interest or you're only paying the bank for letting you borrow the money, but you're not making any contribution. So if you got a loan for 300 grand, you're paying for a year in it, Interest only, after that year, you still owe 300 grand. Exactly. So what happened back in 2000, uh, let's say in the early 2000s, was that people were paying, uh, let's say, 700 bucks a month, right? Like they'd get an interest only loan at 700 bucks a month. So it makes their payment a lot better because they're not the, paying the extra the two, principal, 300. The principal, they're not what paying principal. What was the catch the They're like, okay, so, here's so what your pay- payment is 700, whatever you do extra, then that goes that to goes the principal. principal yeah. So here's what was happening though. What people were doing is saying, okay, well, I'll buy a house, $700 payment, I'll rent it for 900, right? right? Because rents were about 900 bucks on average at, at that time. time. Uh, I'll make 200 bucks a month. And before that interest or before that loan expires on me in three to five years, I'll sell it and take all the equity. Right. Well, in 2007, like in 2007, there what was happened? No there, was, no. there was so many people that were doing like that just... All the loans kind of hit at the same time, right? And now, like people's seven hundred dollar payments went to fifteen hundred, right. and now the people were still only paying nine hundred dollars in rent, which is the complete opposite of today. Like today, <laughs> rents are more <laughs> expensive than what than and what buying. than mortgage payments yeah. are. Actually, today today, rents are cheaper than mortgage payments. But this is just as of the last few weeks. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, what we're not going to start seeing is those interest only loans or those types of things because the banks already know like that's that's, gonna, that's not going to happen. You they know? learned. They yeah. learned. So uh, back to back to this though, people had a mortgage at seven hundred. They rented the house at nine hundred, and then uh, the mortgage payment went up to fifteen hundred because the interest adjusted. And they're like, hell no, like I'm gonna leave this house because this person's only paying me nine hundred, mm-hmm. and I didn't give any money towards the down payment. Right. Like so that's just, what was happening. I'll lose my house. Yeah. They were getting two loans to finance a an investment property. They were getting a first mortgage for, uh, let's say if the house is worth a hundred bucks for 80 bucks, and they were getting a second mortgage for 20 bucks. So they financed a hundred percent of the property. They paid 700 bucks. Somebody was renting it for 900. They were taking 200 bucks every single month. Um, and when the interest adjusted, they were like, well, no, like I didn't, I just made 200 bucks for a while. I was trying to cash out. Like when the house went up in value, there's so many, there's so much inventory now that the houses can't go up in value. Right. Uh, so I'm just gonna like uh, foreclose it. Do you see right now with the rates going up as the way they've been this past weeks, do you see a lot of uh, contracts being canceled on loans, on, on new home builds maybe, or even, you know, older homes? Do you see a lot of them backing out? What, is, what is the rate right now? You know, uh, good question. Um, but let's go to this one first. Um, people are canceling but not significantly um, in comparison to how people were canceling before. Okay. So like last year on average, like on an average month, you had about 12% cancellations. Okay. Like now you have about 18 to 20% cancellations, okay. which is 6% more. Now people can say, oh, well, like that's 50% more than last year. They're just trying to make up the fucking numbers. And like all, those, all those 6% sounds like a little bit. It it's is actually, little bit. it is a little bit. It is, is a lot. Bit. Okay. No, it's a little bit. Okay. Uh, the second thing is that new home sales were higher in August than they were in July. So like you'd think, right, that home sales are going to like there's like there's going to be less new home sales and there's actually not less new home sales like there was more in August. Right. That's weird. So it's like it's a really, really weird time. 
But what's happening is that people, what are they going to do? Are they going to go and rent somewhere else and pay more? Yeah, bro, rent like, right now. Are they going to are they going to let 2, go? Like if if they if they signed a contract a year and a half ago because it was taking like a year year and a half to build a house. If they signed the contract a year and a half ago, they got fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars in equity. Mm -hmm. What are they gonna do? Say, oh, I don't want my payment being a hundred bucks higher. Like, I'll, I'll let it they go. Care, yeah. Hell no! Uh, like, they want their hundred thousand. You know what I mean? Like, they have all this equity built up into the home that people aren't gonna cancel that, right? I know not. Um, and so that's what we're seeing today is um, that the reality is that people. I mean, there's some people that are canceling. But what they're not thinking about is like, where are they going to live? And like, are they going to live for less than what they're going to buy? I want to get to that. First, let's answer Jay's yeah. question as far as the interest rates. I know you called me uh, this. Was it this week? Was it this week or last week? You called me. Hey, rates just went up. Yeah. Right? What do they go up to now? So uh, it's really like that's another like it's a it's a good question. And it's very difficult to answer it because it really depends on people's financial profiles. Okay. Right, right. The most important thing that people should know is that absolutely every single loan under $647,000 today mm -hmm. is purchased by one of two agencies or through the guidelines of these two agencies, okay. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Cool? Okay. Mm -hmm. So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are essentially um, got taken over by the government or they're um, babysat by the government and they send the rate sheet every single day out to lenders. Lenders don't choose what interest rate they give to their client. They choose what, how much they're going to charge for the interest rate that they're giving to the client, right? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So um, I can choose to say, hey, I'm going to give, I'm going to charge you 2% for this 7% interest rate. Right. Other people might say, hey, you know what? I think that your risk is lower. I'm only going to charge you 1% for the 7% interest rate. Okay, Does that make I sense? get that. Yeah. And yeah. so what happens with that is um, you get to a position in which um, regardless of where you go, like you're going to have the same interest rates and the difference is going to be like how much you pay for the interest rate you can get. Can you get an interest rate at 4.5% today? Yes, because that's the lowest interest rate on the Fannie Mae sheet, which again is one of the government agencies. Mm -hmm. Can you get a 7% interest rate? Yes, because that's one of the rates on the on the uh, Fannie Mae mm -hmm. uh, sheets today. You know? Okay, so like um, you said, it depends on every different... On the financial buyer, really. profile, correct. Okay. Now, the truth is that every lender, now because every lender has access to the exact same rates and they just choose how much they're going to charge you for the interest rate that they give you, um, every lender is pretty close. Like you're within a thousand bucks from one another. That's super crazy. Like the cost of each one is like a thousand bucks from one another. So awesome. it's kind of like, I mean, and, and when you're buying a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar house, a thousand bucks is kind of like having, um, I don't know, this place is $25 more, Chevron is 25 uh, cents, cents more expensive more than, than Shell, you know? Uh, which one do I like better? Like, oh, Shell has a nicer, um, uh, Chevron has tech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you for answering that. Guys, we have to take a little recess for the camera reset. Let's hold this thought. This conversation is great. Eddie took us to school today, man. I appreciate sure. that. Should've so we'll be notebook. right back, guys. All right, guys, we're back. So let's get back to learning. Um, Eddie, there's one thing that I wanted to ask you going back to when I asked you the cancellation things on new homes and yeah. all that. A lot of people say, oh, and I see it on, you know, I scroll, you know, through Facebook or whatever, and I see, oh, this percentage canceled, this people are canceling. And, you know, even like where we live, when you're getting home, all you see is construction. Yeah. All you see is brand new homes. And I know they did one yard, the big, like, I don't know how many acres, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe they're gonna pause that for a while. And then I looked at the other side, I'm like, they're never gonna start there. And I was driving there the other day, I'm like, God damn, they started there too. Yeah. So, I, so that, you know, now you answered my question, you know, about the cancellations, it's not that much, or like, it's, it's not that many. They're building everywhere. So the thing is that the demand for homes has not decreased. Mm -hmm. Like the number of people that want to buy a house has not decreased. Now, have they not, are they not buying right now because they can't afford it? Yes. Like there's less people buying a home today because they cannot afford to buy a house. But the number of people that want to buy a house. Tell, tell that to a lot of people in a language, in a way that a lot of people understand what yeah, yeah. rate does to their capability or buying power to be able to afford something. Yeah. Okay, what a cool. higher interest rate does in that. I got you. So um, people want to be homeowners. Right. 
Gen X, o sea, the older people, the millennials, the Gen Z people, the new people that are coming up, like everybody wants to own a home someday. Like they still believe that that is the greatest path to wealth creation and to retirement, right? Like they would rather invest in a home than in a 401k. Right. Why? Because when you're 65 years old and you cannot work anymore, you guaranteed are not paying a mortgage payment or a rent if you buy early enough in your life. Yeah. At worst case scenario, if you bought later on in your life, you still have a fixed monthly payment that will never ever change. The average is what, 30 years right now alone? 30 years, yeah. yeah. So um, what happens if you buy a house, um, or I'm sorry, if you never buy a house and you're 65 years old, well, when you were 30, that Mortgage payment might have been $3,000 a month, right. but now you're 65 and now it's $6,000 a month. Who can, who can afford a payment better? A 30-year-old with all of the potential in the world and to get one job, two jobs, Uber, full of life. DoorDash, full of life, afford $3,000 for the rest of their life? I mean, for, from then till 60, let's say, or a 65-year-old, a $6,000 mortgage payment? Or a rent payment. Go buy a house. <laughs> at that point, they can't. Right, dude. That's, and at that, you it's know, it's great I mean? how you put that example. You yeah. know what I mean? That's that's great. That's that's what yeah. So we're so we're in that position, right? Like we're all around like a uh, thirty younger. How old are you? 29. 29? 29? 29. 29? 29. 29. 25. 25? Yeah, Danny. Danny just bought his house, guys. Yeah. Congratulations, Danny. Congratulations, Danny. Last was it last week? Last it was week. last week, guys. Last yeah. week, Peace. he bought his house, so 25. You're 25? 25. So 55, bro. Still if you 25. do your minimum. Boom, if you do the done. minimum. If you do if the I minimum do and you do good, at 55. Yeah, wow, hopefully. No, yeah, of time. course, but congratulations, Danny, on that. Yeah. So yeah. you buy a house, right? You buy a house young, and um, you are able to make more payment now than you're able to make in the future. And so that's the reason why people are choosing to continue to buy today, right? Now, some people can't afford the house, like literally cannot afford the house today because of where interest rates are at today. Right. But as soon as interest rates come down, guess what happens? Affordability goes up and now people are doing the same thing that they were doing last year, which was I'll pay 10, 20, 50, $100,000 over. Over. over what the value of the house actually is. Tag me. So if somebody... <laughs> <laughs> I so have to pay 50 for... 50 I have to pay 20. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if somebody, right, is looking... It can afford to purchase a home today. They can buy it at or less than market value. And they can also get the seller to help cover their closing costs. Tag Danny now. Tag Danny. Yeah. So, and that's something Tell I just want to. I just want to add that up. if you're in the position that you want to buy a house and you're like, interest is just too high. I'm just gonna wait. Look at what happened. As soon as I bought, interest went up like one point five. Dude, I think it was like two oh, days after you closed. Yeah. yeah. So, I just the way I see it is there is never the wrong time to buy, as long as you're ready. Like, right. let's say you, you live with your parents, you've been there for, I don't know, all your life, and you're like, you know what, I'm just tired, I just want to move out. And if you can afford the payment, I mean, this why not to do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's better, like Eddie said, it's better to start early on your yeah. life. When, it's easier when you're to 40, afford 50 it. years old, maybe they're about to fire your ass, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to make the payment. Yeah, like he said, so, it's easier to make the payments when you're 30, when you're 30 than when yeah. you're 60, 65. Yeah, because just remember, cool. how long did we talk about you buying a house? I know, and I want to apologize. No, <laughs> don't, don't, don't. No, so, how, long yeah. did we talk, how long did we talk about it, though? Um, like, the preparation of it, like, oh, how long was it? It was, it was pretty short. And no, like, it was, it wasn't it like we talked for like a year, probably. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was thinking about it. I was thinking it about it. Like the, the new house happened super quick. Yeah, no, I was thinking like, about the, the, prepara the preparation of the house, yeah. like getting your income ready and like right. getting yeah. your credit so ready. That was and all quick. Of those that was a, that's what I meant. Yeah. To get you qualified, it takes like a week or two max, and they tell you, okay, you qualify for this. Now you look for a house and now you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Danny, go it was first. more like he was afraid. You were a little yeah. afraid. But let's yeah. say how long it took me to buy the house, bro. It took me like a year, yeah. a year to buy, if not more, because I was changing my mind. And I was we like, did, me yes, and you did no. the math. Me and him did the yeah. math. 
when he if he would have bought that house, let's say you let's say he sent you his pay your pay his pay stubs and all this, right? And you tell him, I think you sent you sent him like a pre qual letter, yeah, right? Yeah. Saying, hey, you're approved for this much at this rate. If he would have pulled the trigger at that time, bro, it would have been better. Let me tell you something. He could have bought that house even a hundred thousand dollars more than what he bought it today. Yeah. And his payment was would have been five hundred dollars less, even just because of the interest rate or something yeah. like that. So. You okay. waiting? You did good because, like you said, you and might as well. It's you better were... now. So okay, something, then, something so, that I want to add to that. Let's say at that point, the house was maybe eighty grand more, but interest was three percent lower. Right. Three percent. One percent. What's three percent difference on a on a house payment? On a four hundred thousand dollar loan, it's a big, it's a big interest. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a. So yeah, after difference. the down, everything like finance or something like that. But let's say. The house was let's say a hundred thousand more. Let's say now that I bought it, let's say I bought it for a hundred less than what I could last year. Yeah, because you didn't have to, to like today. You didn't have to pay more than what you uh, yeah. than what the yeah, house was, was like, worth. You, you got it for to, less than what the house was worth. I was just and he was actually to, able to budge, like say, hey, no, you know, I think the AC system was a little older, so yeah. I'm gonna put a new one. Hey, it's ten thousand dollars. Okay, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll help you with five thousand towards your closing costs. So now you're able to. Negotiate in a sense. Yeah, you know? and, that's, and that's something yeah. I, I want to add because let's say if someone wants to buy it, but let's say they show on their budget for like 50 grand or something. Let's say you see the house that you like, and that's what happened to me. Let's say I saw this house, like it, it's actually nice, but I think I don't want to pay what they're listing it for. So I just called the realtor. I told him, hey, you know what? Do you have any offers? And we just talked, and I was like, I offered this much. I just throw my number. I didn't yeah. know they were going to say yes. I think you offered say, like, yes. what was it, like 70000 less? No, it was 120 less. less. I would have so blocked at, you. At the end of the day, <laughs> look, and what, if you're the type of guy, you're like, no, nah, I'm just not going to offer because they're just going to decline your, your offer. Yeah. Then you're just going to stay at the same spot. Yeah. But what happened, so we started to negotiate, I mean, you know the price. And at the end of the day, I got the house for like seventy thousand lower than what the asking price yeah. was, and when I did my inspection, I lowered another ten thousand because the AC unit. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I got the house eighty thousand lower than so what the asking price was. So for last year, somebody would have paid what the house was worth and then and, some. So they would have oh, they would have overpaid seventy and then some, and then they would have also paid all the closing costs. But exactly. you were seeing Which a lot of investors buying. Today. A lot of Cali side on scene were. Bidding higher oh, yeah, than yeah. what the listed yeah. price, and at the time, me, I would say how stupid. And I'm, I'm, you know, again, I'm not an expert, but for example, they bought my uh, Juan's, uh, my brother-in-law's home, sight unseen. I think it was some Cali investors, yeah. right? They bought it for, uh, he listed it for three forty. He ended up signing, I think, I, you know, don't quote me on it. I think, I think, I think three seventy or three sixty-five. Yeah. Sight unseen, as his home, right? Boy, it's an everything. older home, probably the two thousand uh, year, built in two thousand. Uh, older home so probably need some repairs sight unseen yeah. for you know 20 grand over and I used to say how stupid man how stupid and, and I think everybody thought the same and everybody sold their homes right but now I think about it those guys probably got a 2.5 percent mm -hmm. interest rate on that home as an investor right and now today they're probably rent their their, their payment on a three hundred thousand dollar loan what is it right now i i, mean, I, I can't say maybe at yeah, like a, on that it might be fifteen hundred right, and right now i guarantee payment? you that house right now they can rent it for twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. so who's the dumbass it's right next to the west game me so i was calling them stupid yeah these guys are using other people's money to make a thousand dollars a month yeah. and those people are going to pay off their house so eventually these, these it guys, doesn't matter what the price was right so right so you see, as an investment, like me, you don't care about the price of the house because it doesn't like a, you're not gonna pay it off. Like right. the renter's I'm gonna. I'm pay saying it off. only if you're paying cash for right. it, then it's a different conversation. Yeah. And, and I think that we shouldn't have that conversation because I mean, who really buys a house cash? Nobody. Probably not us, right? If and even the real rich, wealthy people, they still use loans because it's yeah. smarter to do that, right? So what I'm saying is, I'm so and I learned my lesson from that. I was so small minded, very little minded, yeah. that I used to say. Oh, these people are stupid. Now I'm like, God so damn. check out the other thing that happened. I was that. stupid. Yeah. So these people weren't just buying one or two houses. Oh no. These oh, people no. are buying hundreds of houses. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. Okay, so this is what people did. So what they did was they said, okay, there's this neighborhood, right? This neighborhood should be worth more money. Let's buy a hundred houses. They study all that. Yeah, they study all that. Let's buy a hundred houses at three hundred thousand, and then let's buy two houses at four hundred thousand. 
And then let's take those three hundred thousand, those ninety three hundred thousand dollar houses, and let's sell all of those for four hundred thousand. So they what? overpaid for two houses to create comparable, so that they could then go and sell these other ninety eight houses for the four hundred thousand. Man, that's smart. And they just they like they made a killing, bro. But yet like, us that we years. don't know, we're like they're dumb, they're dumb, they're yeah. dumb. When they're Who's up there, just laughing. They at weren't paying that for Dude, all my the houses. They were house paying that for some of the houses. It's half a mile from Westgate. Yeah. <laughs> now they're building the resort there. They're doing all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, damn. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it is, let me ask you something. When interest rates go up on a house, we already we already said, hey, it makes it harder for people to budget for it for a home. Mm-hmm. It makes it harder for people to qualify for it. Does that, we can see it. It makes houses be worth less, right? It makes houses, it makes people say, hey, I can take Danny's $100,000 less offer. I can fix his AC. Only because of the fear that people have. Only because of the fear that the seller has. Right. Oh, not okay. because the house is worth less. The the unknowing of what the can fear be. of the of the fear of the seller says yes, I'll take that offer for less. What's the seller gonna do? Where are they gonna go? They're I gonna go that, and they're gonna yeah. buy, they're gonna go and rent somewhere else that's gonna be more expensive with a bunch of money in their pocket. There's right? one thing that when I inflation saw. is at all time high, right? That's like true. when their money is worth literally less and less every single day. They're putting, they're taking the money out of their house and they're putting it into a bank account. Hopefully they're starting a business. I think it's a great idea to sell your house or to uh, refinance and take cash out. If you're starting a business or if whatever you're going to do with the money is going to make you more than what you're currently, than what you're going to lose. Give you an example. I had a client recently um, owed a hundred thousand dollars on their house. Um, had a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt between cars, um, credit cards, personal loans, uh, like a bunch of stuff. Um, they took out a loan for two hundred thousand dollars total to pay off everything that they owed, including the house, two hundred thousand total, right. and their monthly payment went up by five hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. The hundred thousand dollars of debt that they had was like two thousand dollars a month. Okay. So they literally are saving now. $1,500 in comparison to what they were paying before by having consolidated all of that debt into the house. Does that make sense for that client to take a $500 higher mortgage payment? Hell yeah, it makes yeah, sense it to do that. Yeah, right? why? Because now he has $1,500 on space, more which cash flow. He could use that cash money cash either to send a little bit more towards mm-hmm. principal, which at the end of the day, you're going to save some of the exactly. interest. Yep. But if you waited if with you were ma- loans, If you continue just making the same monthly payment, now you finish paying off your house and... Yeah. That's one thing that we were years, seeing that we were years. seeing here in Arizona is yeah. a lot of people would, you know, from, I mean, we all know the California buyers really. They would sell their home two million, one point five million, come buy a house here for eight hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand mm-hmm. cash even, you know, and then they would still have money to build their business, get out of their job, whatever, whoever they were working for, yeah. start their own business here, pretty much start a new life, debt free. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's why we were having to compete with them, really. And it, I feel like, you know, it was tough. But a lot of people I, I saw, I personally met a lot of people who refinanced them or either got a HELOC on their on their homes. Mm-hmm. Um, and they started their own business. Now yeah. they're self-employed. Now they're making money. That's you know? the only two times when people should either refinance when interest rates are higher or sell when rents are higher is when they're going to go. Put that money that the equity that was built on the house and the investment invest it into a business that's going yeah. to generate them more to offset the new higher monthly payment and, um, that for some people just like them. rafa said can you just explain a little bit what a HELOC is because i know a lot of people don't know what that what that is yeah of course. And it's actually a really good tool if you have business i have a HELOC or if you want to make a new business so yeah so a HELOC uh, stands for home equity line of credit And what it is, is essentially a loan against the property um, that's used like a credit card. If you don't owe anything on it, you don't pay anything on it. If you owe $100 today, you're going to pay interest just on the $100 today. If tomorrow you pay down 50 bucks, now you only pay interest on the 50 bucks that you owe. Right. right? So uh, it's it's a really, really cool way to not have to mess with uh, refinancing refinancing and uh, with the interest on the first mortgage, which is typically the larger portion of the loan. That's true. The downside of a, a home equity line of credit is that interest rates are variable. Yeah, and when change. interest rates are variable, they change. And so like if you're talking about borrowing 
a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars and you don't know one what you're gonna do with the money and two you don't have any way to pay it to pay back the actual principal you're just gonna be making minimum monthly payments True. it's not a good idea True. because your payment today could be 300 well next week or next month Five, it could 600. be 600 and right. then next year it could be a thousand and so you don't know if you're gonna be able to afford it at that point. And if you don't have any way of paying it off, like what are you gonna do? I, I can personally speak on a HELOC. I have a HELOC myself yeah. on my previous home um, that I'm renting now. And so one thing that, you know, I think for HELOCs is it, the house does not have to be paid off. What a HELOC is, let's say I owe, you know, this lender 200 grand, but my house is worth 500,000 now. I think they lend 80% yeah. of, of loan okay. value. So I'll get a loan for another 280,000 pretty much, right? Um, what it does for me is it gives me opportunity now. I'm a hustler and I'm sure a lot of people are. If I see a car, in my industry I know cars. If you, whatever you sell, whatever you do, you know, it, it opens this mindset of opportunity for you. If I see a car that's worth 50, I can literally go buy it today for 50 with my HELOC if I don't have my liquid yeah. cash. And then I know I can sell it for 55, I made a 5K yep. with somebody else's money. I paid probably in literally two, three, five days or in a week, I'll pay 20 bucks interest. Yep. That's, some, that's, a, that's a very great thing to have. If you don't have that HELOC, you don't have the liquid cash, and that opportunity was presented to you. You lose it. You lose that fucking opportunity. And that's one thing that during the recess we were talking about opportunity, knowing how to realize when the opportunity is presented. And... At my age now, I'm pretty sure I've lost a lot of them, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure I think I've, we all have. Right, I think we all go through that, and I'm pretty sure I've thought I've I've sought a, an opportunity, and it ended up not yeah. being one, and it's a loss. Um, but you live and learn. But again, a HELOC in my personal thing, I can tell you, I pay my mortgage right now with my HELOC. What I'll do is I'll sc scroll through it's a Craigslist, even offer up whatever. I'll find a car, well, eighty k. Usually what I'll do is I'll search the higher end ones, mm -hmm. the more expensive ones that is less competitive. Yeah. I'll buy it 80 grand, offer it to, cause again, I already know all these people. You already know the buyers. Yeah, so I'll, hey, give me 84. Yeah, I'll take 84, all right, boom, boom, boom. Two, three days, I got I made four grand yeah. for somebody else's money. That's money that obviously I have in equity in my home that if I just, what's you know, what's good to say, hey, I owe 200 on my house and it's worth 500 now. Okay. If you can't um, use the money, like what's what's a good? You're form? not using the money. Yeah. Use the money. You yeah, know. And I see sometimes, like, just like Rafa said, sometimes we see an opportunity, and let's say if it's too good to be true, we're like, we're scared. Now, it it can't be, but sometimes it is true. Yeah. You just have to take them. Be take scared the risk. though. Yeah. It's okay to be cautious. I lost a hundred grand, guys, with an opportunity <laughs> I thought I saw. I, one time, I they were selling two demons at a good about deal. This. Yeah. At the time, demons were only hundred. They were only about hundred and ten grand. Yeah. I found two demons. I found two demons for a hundred each. Yeah. I wired the guy. I told him, "Hey, I wired you hundred grand for one, and then when you drop off, when you drop them off, uh, suppose it was a dealer. I so I thought I did my research. I'm like, when you drop them off, uh, I'll give you the other hundred grand for the other one. And he said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Boom, boom. I sent the wire blocked. Seriously, Dang. I lost. And you know, wires you can't just yeah. Get so back. what is it after two hours or something like that? Yeah, after you two hours cancel. you can't cancel a wire. Yeah. And yeah, the guy, hey, as soon as I sent the wire, that's when I thought it was weird. As soon as I sent the wire, the guy's like, hey, I'm about to end, uh, go into a dentist appointment. I'm going to be gone for about an hour, an hour and a half. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't think too much of it. And then I started seeing, like, reviewing the pictures he sent me. I pulled up the window sticker of one of the cars. And the picture that he sh showed me was red. But I pulled up the VIN and the window sticker. It was actually black. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. Fuck, I got screwed. And that's when I started doing all this. I went, I went to his bank to Chase. It was Chase, the, the company I wired. I'm like, hey, you need to put a stop on this wire now. And it, thankfully, I was able to. It took about four or five months to get my money back. Dang. But we didn't go through, like, no lawsuit or nothing. Yeah. I, was, I was able, I was just on time to have Chase put, like, Before a fraud hit. hold yeah. on his account because while we investigated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we had all the proof he didn't. Yeah. And yeah. it took about four to five just months. Like, probably, you know, let's say if I wire Rafa money, Let's say I already have it on my account. If I move it to, let's say, Wells Fargo, like another bank, that money they, is gone. Yeah, they mm -hmm. protect Chase it. Chase can't do anything. Yeah. yeah. And, well, good thing you... 
Yeah, you thankfully I, I was a little quick on it. Yeah. You know, like boom, but I learned from that. You know, now if I see a good deal, honestly, if I find a good deal, I'll send you five hundred bucks. Hold it off me. Yeah. I'll catch a flight. I'll go and do the whole deal myself. Yeah. No more wiring a hundred grand. <laughs> Fuck that. Unless I've done business with you and I know you, and even then, I still think about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, opportunities. Be smart. Uh, don't uh, also don't be scared if they're good deals. Personally, there's some deals where I've made 20, 25 grand on a car, and I've sometimes been a little scared of it. I'm not gonna touch this deal because it looks too good, it looked, mm-hmm. and it's been good. Yeah. And I've made 20, 18, 25 on a car, and I'm thankful I didn't miss out on them. But you know, you live and learn. You have to be prepared for it, though. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. I think that uh, we touched on like the home equity line of credit is that it gives you the flexibility that you don't pay anything if you don't use it. That's the, yeah, if you don't have to use part. it, you don't have to use it. You just leave it there. It's just a safety, um, little emergency, the way emergency I see a HELOC, fund. Yeah, the way I see a HELOC is all right. Opportunity fund. Let's call it an opportunity yeah. fund. So yeah. that's exactly so what so HELOCs the HELOC? will no longer be HELOCs. After they will be today, opportunity yeah. fund. They're called opportunity yeah. fund. Yeah. So opportunity fund. Opportunity fund. Opportunity fund. Opportunity fund. Because Oops. imagine you look at an opportunity and you're like, fuck, where do I get the money from? Now you have to get approved and everything. Let's say you're presenting an opportunity where you can buy something for a hundred grand and you can sell it for 120 right and then you're like oh yeah but my house is worth 200 and uh, no I, I owe 200 and my work my house is worth 500 um where do i get the money yeah. from yeah oh you have to refinance it's gonna take months the opportunity is gone by yeah. the time that's, yeah that's what so, i yeah so, so the opportunity funds no 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 longer known as helocs it's yeah. a great thing to have guys fund. definitely look into it for sure i think it's a great thing to have 100%. um going back to you know the interest rates i did ask you if the interest rates go up um the houses tend to go down because they have to make it more affordable for people to be able to buy or no well in order for home prices to go down there has to be more houses available for sale demand there has to Less be demand. supply supply yeah there has to be a lot of supply of houses in order for homes to drop in price Okay. Supply can come from a couple of places. They can come from people who currently own a home or people who are losing their house or banks that are taking people's homes away and are flooding the market. That's another one. Or the third is with uh, new home builders that are just building a bunch of houses. Right. So um, why are people not going to be the like where the inventory comes from? Well, people today have to pay a higher rent. Uh, for the same house that they have a lower monthly mortgage payment in. I'll say it again. If people have a $1,500 a month payment on a $300,000 house, the same house rents for $2,500, which is what we were just talking about earlier. Right. People aren't going to sell their house to go and pay $2,500. They're making for a thousand a month without, right? With Yeah, the people are saving $1,000 a month right, by so not yeah. renting, right? Right. So what are people going to do? Like, why are people going to go and sell their house if their monthly rent is going to be higher than their monthly mortgage payment where they're actually paying money through the principal and they're going to yeah. be done paying off their home? Owning something, something instead something. of paying somebody's yeah, house. They're, they're, they're not going to do that. Now. now, is there some people that are going to do that because they want to ha- cash out on the money that they have? Yeah. And what are they going to do with it? They should start a business. They should pay off debt. But other than that, like, I mean, they and should. Some, think, some people yeah. don't think about that. Like, they're like, don't, damn, my They house- get scared. I owe three hundred. Damn. What about if tomorrow it's only two fifty? But okay, if let's say it's worth two fifty, yeah, we're gonna live. You still need a place to live. Yeah, you a place to live. But let's say you sell it because you were scared. Now what you, you buy a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house for two thousand a month. In an what are you gonna do? At a what forty third for two hundred and five hundred? Yeah. And bucks? it's not yours. No. What's, yeah. the, what's the average yeah. apartment cost right now? Like twenty, like two thousand. Let's say that's that's an okay, pretty good area yeah. apartment. But if you go to like the bad areas, I'm guessing twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Twelve thirteen hundred bucks for a bad area. Very bad apartment. Twenty seven for like sixteen <laughs> hundred. Like like oh, then never mind, guys. Take yeah, that back. So the rents are super expensive. So yeah. that's one, right? So people aren't gonna sell their house to uh, pay more in rent. The banks aren't gonna take people's houses away because if they take somebody's house away, then they're gonna have to sell it in auction for less than the bank is owed. So it, it doesn't money. make sense. The banks already learned that, right? The banks already yeah. learned that in the last curse. They're not gonna do that again. Um, and the third is home builders. Home builders are not in the business of building houses. 
they're in the business of making money selling the houses that they just built. Right. 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 They're not in the business of building houses for Say fun. That. Read that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Builders are not in the business of building houses for fun. They're not Bob the Builder. <laughs> <laughs> They're not HGTV, <laughs> million dollar makeover no, for no, fun. No, they no. don't do that. They're not just going to build. Oh, They're oh, building <laughs> to make a profit, right? right? Yeah. Well, construction workers aren't going to wake up. Well, like right now, they make 25 bucks an hour. On average. On I average. know someone that make 40, 30, 40, 40 yeah. yeah. So uh, on average right now, like a construction worker, like you can find them for 25 bucks an hour. Yeah. That person's not going to wake up tomorrow and say, hey, boss, I just want to make 12 50 today. <laughs> like, right? I, just wanna, I woke up happy hey, today. I woke, I, woke, I woke up happy today. I just want to make 12 50 They're not going to They're not gonna say I want to make half of what I made yesterday. The price of wood is not going to say, hey, you know what? Today, you know, I woke up in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I said $5 a linear foot. I'll do two fifty. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And it's not going to drop in half. Like nothing's going to drop in half. And so like, how are you expecting houses to go to drop in half? Right. Yeah, like, it's not like it's not before. It's like, how are you going to tell someone, hey, now you're going to make less. Yeah. And it's like, can't. they're just going to quick and go find the other place. Can, yeah. And I think that's what has been happening. I, I see a lot of places where like, actually, so since I bought my house, I went to Home Depot, just buy a few things that I need for like, you know, just model and everything. And then there was a guy that I saw there when I used to work at Home Depot. He's still working there. Yeah. And he was like, oh, how's it going? And he was like, oh, pretty good. I think he's like the store manager now, but he's like, but everybody's quitting. They last like a week and they, they leave. And I'm like, why? Nobody wants to well, work Home anymore. Depot, they're just not paying enough and they just want to work. Like now they're like, oh, well, this place paying me this much. I'm just going to yeah. go there. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing. They're just looking for something else. That they're paying what they're asking. Before it used to be like, oh, is this? Take it or leave it. And people yeah. will take it. But now it just, do you know how everything changed? Well, people change there's too. Two, there's two jobs for every unemployed person right now. Okay. That's nuts. Like there's two jobs for every one person that that's looking for a job. That's what the unemployment job. rate right now. That's the unemployment rate. Yeah. So two. if you're not working, it's just because you, you don't definitely want don't want to work. Because there's two jobs well, out there I mean, for there's you. Maybe we've we got to say it uh, politically correct here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be politically correct. Now, fuck that shit. Yeah, people are working. It's because they don't want to. Yeah. There's, there's a job. There. They might not pay you a job like in what they want to work. In like, hey, industry, you know what? Like, there's something out there. There's something out there. Yeah. And like, you know, and you want to. It don't mean you're going to die in that place. Take it for now. Yeah. Figure and it out. And then find like, your industry. You, you, you shit, like you used to build <laughs> furniture. Yeah. By hand, right? Well, guess what? Now people have machines that build furniture, and now people don't want to pay what it costs to have furniture handmade. Yeah, it's not, yeah. So, what are you going to do? Like, you can't work in that field no They're more because like, oh, nobody. This handmade item was, is three grand. Nobody cares anymore. This machine adapt. made is 300 bucks. It looks, yeah, it looks, looks the same. same. <laughs> I'll just tell everybody it was handmade. <laughs> exactly. Like, it, the people aren't yeah. going to do that, right? So, like, that job is gone, right? Like That's that, true. So, what people got to do? People got to find another job now. Is there, like, today, like, what are we struggling with, right? Like, you found Jaden? Yeah. I found Beto, yeah. right? But, man, I had to go through a lot of people to find that. Of course. I had to, like, videographers, video editors, like, people that can work on your websites, like, people that can do a really professional job that are, that take initiative. And that yeah. you could trust. That them. you can, tr that are, that take initiative, that are dependable, and that have the intuition to really put what you want out there. You don't want to be telling people five times what to do. Yeah, no. You just want to tell them, hey, here's the vision. Go and do it. And you yeah. want it to come up better than what you thought it was. Yeah, you, thought, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's why Beto gets paid the big bucks. Hey. hey. <laughs> Jaden, Jay so this shop. podcast might get the big bucks. <laughs> 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 He's going to ask for a raise. No, we thank you guys for being shout here. Out. We know it's yeah. late, guys. So shout, shout out shout to out you guys. To we really do so appreciate you guys. That is a growing field. Everybody wants to have an online presence, right? Yeah. Like it, it is what it is nowadays. Hundred percent. Like we have imagine to all this knowledge without this podcast, without the videos that Beto does for you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've seen your videos yeah. and I've seen here and there, but now that you know, I sit and talk, hear everything. Now I'm getting so much more knowledge. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's you have to do this kind of stuff. They're fundamental to yeah. us. And I think yeah. there's a lot, obviously a lot of more things we could talk about. But let's say there's a lot of people that gets paid cash here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that they just got, I don't know, their new job. They just Yeah, let's talk more about one. loans and so stuff now. Let's what go. are the, like, the requirements people need to get approved? Either like 
either if it's income because I know if you get paid cash and you have bank statements you could prove it but you need a specific time getting paid mm-hmm. that way if you get paid to pay stuff then there's different approvals for that right correct yeah so um, on the loan side of things again like there's so many different programs available so many, that really, factors. So many factors it really depends on the financial like profile of each client what the bank wants is history that you've been making money mm-hmm. and likelihood that you will continue to make money right like what that's like the I'm average doing. like two years or yeah two years essentially of history and then the likelihood that your business will continue what if you have good job history but no credit uh that's actually people can do that yeah yeah really so I'm pretty people sure have people zero offer. credit so having bad credit so having zero credit is better than having bad credit bad credit, Cause Cause bad credit <laughs> you told the finance company hey i just don't I just make my it's the same thing with the auto loans Bro, right? with really? auto loans, i have people yeah. that make 10 grand a month and they have bad credit. I'm like, yeah. so you just decide not to pay your shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so you literally, the, the first of the month came, you said, I ain't paying that. Yeah. I made 10 grand yeah. last month and I'm still not and paying you that. Ask, <laughs> and you ask them, how much you pay on rent? Oh, I just gave my mom 300 Nah, bucks. Danny, they still tell you, bro, but why can't you give me a proof? I make 10 grand a month. Yeah. Because uh, you just told <laughs> so, all of us. I help a lot of people and I get that all the time. Hey, bro, so I want this Hellcat. Yeah. I make really good money, but my credit is bad. Why, like, bro? Why, why you don't pay your things? Oh, Look, this is something. Yeah. Can't even finance a snicker. Is, right now, credit is worth more than money. Why? Yeah. Because if you because money and more shit. The thing is, Danny, if you do your research and you do it good, you can use credit to make money. Really, that's what. Yeah. That's what every wealthy person does. Really, yeah, is they use credit. They get in debt to make more money. So with yeah, that debt, for those people that are like, no, I buy everything cash. Cash is just gonna take you so far. So, but if you have the credit, then he opens a lot more doors yeah. because mm-hmm. anywhere you go, they're like, oh shit, this guy could pay. Otherwise, if you go to, let's say you want to buy a $500,000 house, they're like, okay, how do I know you're going to pay? You can show me a pay stuff, but there's no history of you paying something. You so know? going back to the cash, how are you going to show it? Yeah. yeah you like can. you make cash, That's like how, how, are you gonna, how are we going to show it? I do want to ask you that because yeah. I had a close friend of mine, again, on the questionnaire, I yeah, you know, I put that. He did say he's. I know him personally. He's bought a couple cars from us, and I know he makes money. Yeah, I know he makes money, personally. And one thing is, he just puts so many deductions in his business. He's self-employed. Yeah. Uh. So at the end of the year, yeah, you know, let's just say again, this is not numbers he gave me, but let's say he reports two million that came in, but in, right. in, in deductions and all this. At the end of the day, he only made two hundred grand. Right. That's a lot still. Right, but when, so they yeah, say that he only lot. got the, he only made twenty thousand. Because uh, a lot see, of people, I see that a lot. Like I see, <laughs> I see multi millionaire. I see multi <laughs> like I see multi million in sales. Yeah, and then I see thirty thousand in, in gross in, and, in, net in, in net income. In net income, yeah. yeah, my bad. Net income. How does that affect though? Because at the end you of the day, you shoot yourself in the foot. I'm like, that's what the you bank do. Well, you only made thirty thousand, so they're gonna go based on that, and not in the on some loans, right? On some, yeah, on most loans, yes, they're gonna go based off of the amount of money that you reported to the government. Uh-huh. Because again, remember where the money comes from with the lowest interest rates is the government, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which is the government. Right. So you can't say, "Hey IRS, I only made this," but, "Hey government, IRS, I only made this," but go and tell, "Hey government, Fannie Mae, I actually made this." Like, yeah, no, like can't. it's ultimately the same yeah. thing as the Correct. government. You know what I mean? So you can't, you can't really go and say that. So uh, there are programs with bank statements. Um, there's programs with profit and loss um, balance sheets, sheets. Balance sheets that basically your your um, accountant will prepare and right. sign that hey, this is the amount of money they make. The thing is that those loans come at higher interest rates than what a regular. So loans do investments do. loans, right? Investment like if it's a second too. property, it, they the, consider it as an investment loan because they you can't live at both homes. Is Correct. it just like a higher risk? What is thing? it like a one percent? It's a higher risk thing because again, like it's very difficult to prove that there's history and then that it's going that is likely to continue. Okay. And when you're paying taxes, I mean, like for me, like I call it a freedom tax, right? It is like, what it is. It's, it's exactly a freedom what tax, it is. like. Thank God that I live in the United States because here I can live my life with the money that I make. Right. If I made the kind of money that I make today in any other country, right, I would not feel as safe as I feel here. I, I would not feel like I could walk down the street with my girls. Uh, I would, you know what I mean? Like without having like some kind of protection or like I wouldn't know like when 
somebody like someday I'm gonna get like a robocall, right? Yeah. Like uh, that. Tenemos a tu hija. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Still get those from Mexico hey, protesting. Hey, hey, yeah, like, hey, we need this month because yeah. we're going to protect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or exactly, or yeah. we're going to protect your business. It's so exactly like the, what it is, a freedom tax. You, it's a freedom tax, man. So I pay 40%. So I, what? You know what I, I mean? Like, it is what it is. You know, and answering, I guess, my friend's question that I asked that is, I feel like and I feel like you kind of shoot yourself, especially when you're, when you're, when you're a business owner, and you do that. You know, if, if it's true, if that's exactly what you netted, it is what it is. Yeah. Right? If that if you actually acquired all those expenses mm -hmm. and you only netted it 30, 50 grand, it is what it is. Good luck next year. Right. Now, keep in mind, there is one mistake that a lot of lenders make when they're calculating people's income. They okay. just go based off of the net net. The truth is a lot of people reinvest into their business by buying machinery. That's true. The, yeah. uh, depreciatable assets, right? Like things that basically they didn't have a cash is expense. Is that when balance sheets come in effect? No, that's just the tax don't. return. It's on there. It's like, hey, I didn't actually have a cash expense mm -hmm. for this um, caterpillar that I purchased. Right. Right. Um, it's actually a loan and it's going to help me grow my business because right. now I have this and this and that. So that $80,000, if they reported 30, but there's an $80,000 expense for a Caterpillar, now that gets added back as uh, income. So now they actually made 110. My G-Wagon. Oh, you see, this is so why my, you need someone like an expert. My G-Wagon is more than 6,000 pounds. Any vehicle right. over 6,000, my Raptor's over 6,000 pounds. 100% right on. on purpose. Too stupid Tesla, you want to buy it or what? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that after the pod. <laughs> okay. So, um, the vehicles that I've purchased, they're over 6,000 pounds on purpose. Why? Because I can depreciate it and yet it doesn't, like it helps me in that aspect of it, but it doesn't hurt me when it comes for me trying Proving to, your income. Fi yeah, trying to finance. Because you're growing, it's for your business, you're really you need to grow your business well the government says that it's six thousand pounds so if it's six thousand pounds or more you can depreciate it at, into your business uh if it's six thousand pounds or less you cannot depreciate it which means that you have to just pay it like everybody else just normal so the truth is is you know what like hey a g-wagon sure it's more expensive than most other cars but once I take 40%, like it's like I'm getting a 40% uh, discount. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm not paying taxes on That's that. That's why money. people were paying 100000 more than what they were, worth, you know, last year. And they didn't pay any more than they had to. Why? Yeah, they because they, their tax probably covered the rest of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Again, you know, us that we don't know all that, and people would say, oh, you know, they're stupid to pay 100 grand over. There's, there's a back story yes. to it, why they're doing that. It, they're, nobody just saying, like you said with the construction thing, nobody just woke up early and said, hey, today I'm going to pay 100 grand more than, yeah. than what everybody is. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of thinking behind it. Those, it's like, let's say you bought the car, let's say in a year, you sell it. Let's say, depending on what the car market is, maybe you could get that money back. You know, oh, sometimes, yeah. yeah. I feel like a lot of people are basing off what's going to happen and, you know, everybody has their ideas about the market. And everybody's basing off of what just happened this last 2008. time. 2008. Yeah. yeah, what happened in 2008 and then what just happened now with COVID, with the, the way everything went down and then just drastically, you know, went Bump, up, jump, everything up. Yeah. Everybody's thinking, okay, you know, this, you know, it goes this, like this and that. Do it's you not, think... It's not going to be this and that. <laughs> that. That's, I mean, personally, yeah. I feel the same way, yeah. right? I feel the same way. Do you think that houses are going to stay... I, we all know inflation... And I feel like, you know, again, I'm not an expert, but I feel like um, rates are going up on purpose to to reduce inflation, and which is good, to reduce people saying, hey, I'll pay 50 more, I'll pay mm -hmm. 70 more, 60 more, whatever, which is good. But do you feel like it's going to say, okay, well, now that inflation is coming down, now they're going to keep going down? Or do you think it's just going to be steady movement? And as years go by, we see it with cars, cars get more technology. You know, before they didn't have Bluetooth. Now they have Bluetooth. That's a hundred dollars more on the build. And you know, now the average new car cost is more than what it used to be ten, five years mm -hmm. ago. So, do you? I mean, everybody wants nicer homes too as they're getting newer, of course. So, do you see prices staying steady there, or are they gonna keep rising like they have been for many decades? How they just keep going up, 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 up. So I think that it'll stabilize. I don't think that they will go up the way that they've been going up the last couple of years. Like the last couple of years, we saw 20, 30 yeah. percent increases. Yes. I think that we will see closer to inflation numbers. Right now, inflation is like 8 percent. Homes are gonna go up like 10 percent this year. Okay. From the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Now, 
uh, that they go they, they went up like 13% between January and, and May. So if somebody bought a house in May, like and at the, at the peak, right? They might lose 3% by the end of this year, but right. next year they might recuperate that 3% and then grow more. It just right. depends on when, like when you look at the cycle, right? Sure. So um, when we talk about like what's gonna happen with inflation in the housing market, I think that inflation again creates, um, so inflation is, uh, I guess we gotta start there, right? Right, inflation, yeah. So inflation means that your money is worth less. So if I have $100 in my bank account today, next year, the same $100 is only going to buy me $92 worth of stuff based on where inflation is, is inflation. right now, yeah. right? So I could buy 100 pieces of candy today. Next year with the same 100 bucks, I can only buy 92 pieces of candy. Right. So uh, what happens with, uh, with when you're talking about homes is that that same $100, right, that used to buy you 100 pieces of wood Next year, now it's only going to buy you 92 pieces of wood. So what are you going to need? You're going to need $108 in order to buy, to the, buy, 100, in order to buy 100 pieces of wood. So there is no way that because inflation, like when inflation is high, like there is no way that the cost of building a home is going to be cheaper. Okay. Because the cost of building isn't cheaper, houses can't decrease. Because the banks won't take people's houses away, homes won't decrease. Because... Um, People aren't going to be uh, selling their house to go and rent for more expensive somewhere else. Houses aren't going to get cheaper. Now, are some people going to sell their houses cheaper? Yes. yes. But will the overall market of the millions of homes that there is in, in, in the country, right? Will millions of people sell their homes? No, right? And there's a huge shortage of homes in comparison to the people that want to buy, to buy. homes. Yeah. So the demand is there. As soon as interest rates go down, that demand will pick up higher. Like, I'm sorry, the demand will continue being there, but now people will, be, will um, have the affordability of it. Yeah. And so now those people are going to be able to say, hey, I'm going to pay $10,000 over, $15,000, $20,000 right. over. And that's going to just make the market a little bit crazy in the next, uh, like in the coming years, I would say. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's, that's good. Yeah. And um, what made you think about like, I want to open my own brokerage company. I want to be able to help people, you know, find their loan. What made you do that? I know you said you started, obviously, I was five when I, I mean, I know you story a little bit, which you mentioned before. You started as a teller, right? I started as a teller, yeah. Okay, and then you just move your way to... Uh, yeah, somewhat. So uh, one of the things that I love most about the industry that, um, that I'm in right now is that I help people make the best use of their money. Right. I help people make the best decision and not just the fastest. Mm -hmm. Because going back, I got kicked out of high school in order to do that. And the reason I got kicked out of high... The reason why I even got that job in the first place was because I couldn't go to engineering school. I wanted to study material science, which is like the, the chips, right? Like I wanted yeah. to build chips. So um, I couldn't go to school for that because my parents, one, um, stopped making their mortgage payments. They didn't have credit. They didn't, I couldn't get loans. Two, uh, my parents made more than $40,000 a year, which meant that I couldn't get um, scholarships, 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 and fast 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 scholarships and all that. And you know, that's something that and I, three, I'm against it because... There's a lot of people, even kids that they don't live with their parents anymore, but they have their parents, so automatically they don't qualify for those loans. So there's a lot because of people, I mean, you, they don't qualify, qualify for, for the scholarships. For yeah, yeah. So now what they have to do, there's no other option but get a loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So get in debt. The, other, the, the third reason, which is what got, me, what got me to doing the things the way that I do them today, is... Uh, that my parents took all of their life savings and put them into the house that later on, like by the time that I was getting ready to go to college, like it wasn't worth anything anymore. Yeah. So um, the truth is, is that like, I'll just say the number, like my parents took $200,000, like that was their whole life savings, and they dumped it into a $500,000 house. Okay. Well, by the time that the house was, um, was like, because the loan officer that they were working with told them that this, that's going to get your lowest monthly payment. Yeah. But if the lender had told them, hey, if you just put $100,000 down instead of 200, your monthly payment is going to be just $500 higher a month. Right. 
my parents would have probably said, you know what? And I'll keep a hundred. I'll keep a hundred. I've been saving for Kids this. Kids are going to school. Yeah. Like something's going to happen. Like so I'm going to need this money at some yeah. point. Opportunity, right? Like opportunity fund. Like I'll need this. Some uh, I'll need it for something in the future. And they would have probably kept that hundred thousand dollars, and I might have ended up in college. Yeah. And I might not be where I'm at right now, or I might be somewhere different. You right. know what I mean? The point is that today I help people make the best decision, not the fastest. I help maybe, people. Maybe at that time that loan officer just wanted to make a get quick that little check and let's go. Then yeah. answer any questions. Yet. So yeah. So helping make people make the best decision, not the fastest. Guiding people to uh, under like understand people's budget, right? right? And then helping them make the best use of their money, like that is what I do in my business. Yeah. And you know, I, well, myself, they they say that I take a long time signing people. Yeah. But. I just like to explain everything, every single detail. Yeah. Why? Because let's say it's a first-time buyer. They don't know anything about a vehicle. They just like, I bet they're scared. I was at some point. Yeah. But what about if someone tells them how they could do it to get to the top, like where like credit is good, they won't need down payment, their interest is low. What do they need to do? You know, work their credit. And I, well, I tell them what to do. But there is some people like, let's say, what the guy that helped your parents, they're like, oh, this is your payment, this and that. And let's say they're like, okay, yes, I'll do it. That's it. He, that's he like, it. Why, why are you going to question it? Yeah, yeah. why are you going to question like, it? That's it. Sign As a salesperson, you should. Yeah. As a salesperson trying to make a check, you shouldn't. Yeah. As a business person trying to build and grow a business forever, you should always take the time to educate every single client because nobody else does it. Yeah. And when they talk to a friend, family member, and cousin who's looking to buy or sell a house or buy or sell a car or oh, whatever, yeah. guess who they're going to call? Hey, you know what? I trust Danny. You should call Danny. Yeah. Hey, what? I trust Rafa. I trust Jason. Like You should call Jason. Because as right? they're going through life, they're going to say, hey, that's oh, true. Yeah. Danny told me this This once. guy helped me out. This person told me that once. That's true. You know, this did help me. Mm -hmm. What mouth. Danny advised me to do, you know, I was a first-time buyer, whatever. A year, eight months ago passed. I refinanced. Oh, shit, my payment dropped 200 bucks. He wasn't lying. So mm -hmm. eventually, you know, what he said, they'll come back. So in the and long run, that's what pays off a, at the end. It's the right thing yeah, to do. It's yeah. the right thing to do. So, yeah. That's 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 badass. That's how we started and that's how we ended. Doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Right? It keeps your doors open. I've always said is everybody is um, you know, a while back I was on twenty seventh in Indian school. And I probably was a little mean to this homeless guy. He was he was mean with me though too, so I was a little mean. And I remember telling him he kept ranting on about this this and you don't know what the fuck this, you don't know how hard it is that he's probably right, I don't know. But I told him and I, this thought came to my head and I said do you deserve better? I literally, that is my first thought. Yeah. And he just stayed quiet. I'm like, do you deserve to be in another place other than where you are right now, homeless with nobody around you? Nobody's born without that. You're born from someone. Mm -hmm. And even if, even if, you know, I'm not saying it's easy, but even if you're sent to a foster home, whatever, you're around people, you deal with people. Then you're out of that home. You go wherever the hell you go, you deal with people. You had to burn those bridges at some point mm -hmm. in time. So I'm sorry to say you probably deserve to say to mm. be where you are now. I'm not saying don't die. I'm, I'm saying don't. I'm not saying die there. Or you're not. You're also not saying like, hey, you don't have the opportunity to no. change. I'm just saying well, like, I'm, do yeah. you have the opportunity? Like, right. do you deserve to be where you are right now? Like, right. That's what the, you the, said. The decisions your past they made decisions, right, Jay, to get you there. Your past decisions that you have made. Correct. E even the the smallest thing you thought it was, it got you to where you are today. I'm not saying you're gonna die there, but what I'm saying is you need to realize it. You need to accept that shit and you need to change. Mm -hmm. That's it. But, and he stayed quiet. Bro. And then I went home thinking that day. I'm like, you know, everybody deserves whether good, whether you're homeless, whether you're in a multi billionaire dollar bit mansion, whatever, you deserve to be where you are. And you know what? Sometimes it's sad that uh, the people that you're around with, they might make you do things that at the beginning you never thought of. Like, let's say drugs. How many people you know from maybe high school? I've seen a couple guys. Yeah. That yeah. were with me in high school. I see them on the street, you know, doing yeah. drugs and everything. They don't have a home now. Dude. But what happened throughout the time that made you go to, through that? Did you path, ever have you know? to, I went so, through this myself, is going back to Danny's thing is, did you ever have to kind of just step back out of a circle that you were in before and say, hey, um, you know, this circle is not good for me. 
I need to, you know, these people are not going to get me where I want to be today. Yeah. Right. Did Sin you ever have to? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah, bro. I'm not 100%. saying. What no, I'm saying no, no, for sure. No. I feel like every person kind of, I went through this myself, right? Whether it was a truck club where it was people drinking, like Danny said, going to parties. It, I'm not saying that they were shitty. I'm not saying that they, their life is their life. Yeah. But what I'm saying, to me, to be where I am today, to get to where I wanted to be at that time, I kind of had to step back a little bit and say, all right, no, I need to yeah. you know, kind of back off. I'm not saying they're bad people. What I'm saying yeah, is no. you're not good for what to for me for to get to where to I want to be. Let's say you want to get to like a better, let's say just better yourself. If you stay at the same spot, you are you going to get there sooner or later? Probably not. That's why um, what Rafa <laughs> said makes sense. And I remember your story. It's like if you hang out with people that they just do, let's say, Something that is not taking them anywhere, okay, is that going to take you where you want to be? Probably yeah. not. So it's better to make the change yeah. as soon as you realize that that's not that's, the right that's, path. That's the do, one thing. You know? As a grown-up, you know, when you're 16, I don't know how you did it. Going yeah. back to when you were 16, 17, you realized an opportunity. You know, I'm speaking for myself now. When I was 16, 17, 18, I didn't see that, right? So, but now as a grown-up, now I'm 29, we can clearly, we, we're at an age now, everybody in this room. Well, we can kind of say, okay, this guy's not good for me. Yeah. This guy's good for me. This guy's not good for me. When you were 16, 17, 15, you don't realize yeah, that. Right. You can't judge people for not realizing that. But when you're 26, 25, anything over 25, really, you're mature enough or you should be mature enough to say, this this person's not good for me. You know, I'm not going to say, hey, fuck you, but yeah. I'm not, hey, you want to come drink with me? I'm tired today. I'm yeah. busy today. And that's it. You that's know, kind of just, we're old enough to realize that. So... Real quick before, you know, unfortunately we have to kind of end this in a few minutes, but real quick, I do want to ask you is, we already went over a lot of very helpful information. We all thank you for that. I'm sure our viewers are very grateful for mm -hmm. it as well. Um, do you have something that we, maybe we didn't touch, a subject you didn't we didn't touch, that you would really tell someone, a potential first time buyer, a potential person that maybe just sold their house, thinking of buying one that's kind of on edge with not knowing is there a very important message that you would want to tell them some tips some tips real quick yeah. you know we got a few minutes about 10 minutes more left so you still got time but yeah cool let's make it two minutes no, I'm <laughs> no um i think that people should be making i think people should be making decisions to buy a home when they're prepared to make the monthly mortgage payment for the house um, and I think that people should uh, not make decisions on buying a home when there is a lot of hype. Oh, everybody's buying a house. I got to go and buy a house the yeah. way that things were going on last year, right? Yeah. I think that today people can make a smarter decision and people actually have options today yeah. versus last year. It was like, okay, you saw a home, you liked it. You got to pay 20, 30, 40, $50,000 no. over it's now and now. you have no time to think about it. You have no time to... Um, you just got to make a decision, right. right? Can't budget, can't do this, can't do this, can't do that, right? So I think that today when you take a step back and you say, hey, you know what? Like I have the time to make a decision. Like maybe this isn't the right house. Maybe this is the right house. I can definitely afford the monthly mortgage payment. Let's do it now before interest rates go down. And then as soon as interest rates go down, people are right back to the same hype that people were at last year. Because again, the same people I wanted to buy last year that were paying 10, 20, 30, 50,000, it's not that those people ran out. Yeah, no. It's that the hype isn't there anymore. That's and true. the reason, and because the hype's not there anymore, like that's the reason why um, there's less people buying, you know? Right. So, okay. uh, definitely a good idea to, be, to purchase a home today if you can afford the monthly mortgage payment uh, and your finances are prepared for it. Okay. So don't pretty much, you know, obviously take in consideration what's going on with the with the hype and all this, mm -hmm. but also know your capabilities. Am I able to buy it? Am I able to afford it? Exactly. Because if you stress too much when when is the right time, when is the right time, you're 30 now, then you're going to be 40, 50, and it's yeah. never been the right time. Yeah. Just realize when it's the right time for you for financially yourself. and make, it happen. make, make it happen. Decision. Make it happen. Eddie? Thank you, man, for being here. I, I, I personally learned a lot today. I'm sure the guys did, too, yes, and I'm sure, sure our viewers did, too. We really appreciate you for taking the time. We know it's late. Jaden, Beto, right? Yeah. Beto, thank Beto. you guys for being here. We know it's late, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Again, we're going to put our boys Eddie's uh, socials down here, social media, so you guys can follow him. He's a very smart guy and definitely somebody to 
obviously be learning from, you know, as time goes by. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys again. See you guys on the next episode.